So this evening, uh, guys, we are going to be talking about, we are generally going to be talking about parking and various aspects about having ident identify certain aspects about parking signs and uh, signs and road markings, which can actually cause you to fail your test. Funnily enough, people think that the road markings aren't important, but certain road markings as far as actual parking restrictions are concerned can actually create a problem in the driving test for you. So we will be reviewing some of those this evening and also talking about them. So if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to ask if you have any questions at all regarding that at this stage of the game. Okay, so I see there's a question here regarding the um, double red lines, which is a relatively new introduction to um, parking. We, we, we haven't had those in previously, but a double red line basically demarcates a red zone. And it means that you can't actually, you're not supposed to park there at any time. And it's a place where you need to not stop if you can avoid it. I mean, obviously, if you have a breakdown or something like that, you don't have a job, you, you can't do anything about it. But it's a clear way. It, it, it demarcates a clear way in actual fact. So it's actually no stopping at any time unless you have a specific problem. So that's what that is about. Um, okay, guys, um, if we've got no questions, I'm going to kick right up. I'm going to get on to it. I want to ask you all a question. What error in the driving test can cause you to fail your driving test if you don't adhere to it when it comes to zigzag lines leading up to a zebra crossing? Let me show, give you an example of that. There is something specific that can cause you an action which you might be tempted to do when you are driving within the zigzag lines that can cause you to fail your driving test. So let me show you that. Okay, here we are, sharing the screen. That is a typical zebra crossing. So you are looking at a very typical zebra crossing. And you can see the arrow is pointing to the zigzag lines. Now, I'll tell you what's happened. You are driving along here, and on your side of the road, you're coming into one of these, and on your side of the road, there is a slow-moving uh, electric vehicle, very slow-moving little electric vehicle, one of these disability scooters that's moving along the road there. Now, what could cause you while you are between the zigzag lines to fail your test. Who wants to give me, try and give me an answer for that? Okay, Anchor, you 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 had an answer in there which was very interesting. You can you can talk to us, Anchor. I've got you, I've opened yes, the mic for you. Yes, Chris. Um actually uh, it is not a normal mode of uh, or, or a part of a road. It is um it is not a um, you know a free flow road when it comes to zigzag. So whatever it is in front of you, uh, you have to obey or uh, this uh, go or uh, uh, give regards to whatever it is like cyclist or whatever traffic it is. You have to stay back and uh, not to overtake. Yes, yes, and and uh, I I being a driving instructor, I've sat in a car where there's been a bicycle, a slow moving bicycle on in the zigzag area. And then there's nobody anywhere near the actual pedestrian crossing. And then the student overtakes the bicycle because, and he was within the zigzag area and he overtakes the bicycle and immediately he failed his test. No other faults, only fault, one fault. He overtook within the zigzag area. You are not allowed to take, overtake any vehicular traffic within the zigzag area. That's well done, Mr. Patel. Well done. So um, Lariska will send you an email and then you can claim that, that 10 pound gift voucher. Okay, guys, so there you have it. So the answer to that is really simple. The moment you enter that area where the zigzags are 
telling you you are approaching a pedestrian crossing, whether that be a light crossing or whether that is a, a just an ordinary zebra crossing, doesn't matter what it is. When you're between the zigzags, you are not allowed to overtake any, overtake any vehicle or traffic. That's as simple as that. So if it's a, a disability scooter, a tricycle, another car or anything like that. There's one other thing. So here, let's try this one. There's one other thing that is actually 24 hour restrictive in the zigzag areas. There's one other thing, 24 hour restricted in the zigzag area. Something you are not allowed to do in that zigzag area. Does anybody want to hazard a guess at this one? Comfort, I am allowing you to talk to me. Yes, Comfort, talk to me. Yeah, you're not allowed to park. Yes. yes, it is a no parking area. You are not allowed to park there. Are you allowed to pick up and drop off uh, uh, people there? Are you allowed to stop quickly and drop off somebody in that area? No. No, absolutely not. You are not allowed to park there for any reason whatsoever. The only time you can stop in that area is if there's somebody wanting to use the crossing or you're stopping for pedestrians or the lights have changed or something, then you can stop in that area. But other than that, if you, so in other words, in the normal flow of traffic, you're allowed to stop in that area. But for any other reasons, you are not allowed to stop in that area. That area is an absolute no parking, no drop off. And the fine normally for stopping in that area is 80 pounds or more. It's up to 140 pounds. It just depends on how seriously you disrupt traffic by stopping there and what you're doing in that area. But it's at least an 80 pound fine if you stop. Do you know why it's like that comfort? Why do they do that? Why are you not allowed to stop your vehicle and leave it there? Or why are you not allowed to drop off passengers there? I think it could cause an obstruction for other vehicles. Yeah, it causes it causes an obstruction. You're right. Okay. So other people will overtake you, and that will and that will disrupt the flow of pedestrians and endangered pedestrians on that thing. Thank you very much. Well done. That's really good. All right, guys. So <clears throat> two things you are not allowed to do on the zigzags, right? Is you are not allowed to stop there. All right. Now let me ask you the next question. So let's get on with the next one, and this one's really interesting. So I want to show you this. You guys tell me, where would you find, where would you find this type of sign, this sort of sign here? I'm showing, I'm sharing my screen with you. So you should be able to see that. Those yellow zigzags. Where would you find those yellow zigzags? So just pop it in the chat for us. And if anybody can, let's just see. Where would you find those yellow zigzags. Mm. Yeah, I see the uh, Asal, you said uh, close to schools, and you're absolutely correct. Those are normally outside schools, okay? Um, so it is it is a no parking area outside schools. Okay, so now the question that I have for you, what, when, are you or what are the restrictive conditions around these? We've just said around white zigzags. You, you're not allowed to overtake on white zigzags. You are not allowed to park in the area where there are white zigzags. So in that area where there are white zigzags, yes, near hospitals and possibly near fire stations as well, outside fire stations, yeah? So that's what those, where those white, those zigzags are. Okay, so that's correct. Now, my question here is, how do you determine the restrictive conditions in terms of those zigzags? So I am going to, I see Ayatundu. Go for it, Ayatundu. Good evening, all. Good evening, sir. Yeah. There'll be a sign there, a board with a, it's with a stop sign that do not park or do not, or restriction area. There's always a sign there. And on that yellow line, it's close to school. No matter what it takes, we don't have to park there. Okay. Okay. And and we do say it's it's valid all the time. Um most times, because you just don't have to park there. 
when the students are around. Okay. Except when the children want to cross, you can just stop for them to cross only, but you don't you don't have any right to stop on the yellow line. That's just the truth. Yeah. I attend you're partially right and partially you 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 need to refine your answer a little bit. Most of what you said was accurate and thank you for participating. Okay, let me let me share the screen with you guys. So guys, what you are looking at there is this is a sign outside a school. I'm going to show it, share it with you. And this is a sign outside a school, right? And if you look at the sign carefully, and it might be difficult to see, it says no stopping Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So in actual fact, you can park there as long as you don't transgress the restrictions on the signage. This main, this main thing here is for the, this is right opposite the zigzag lines. And <laughs> you can actually see the sign or um when you when you look let me just see if i can find the image again just give me a second oh yeah 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 it's here's the image i'm going to show you the image but this sign clearly says you're not to stop there between 8 a.m and 4 p.m so before 8 a.m you can after 4 p.m but then there's a yellow yellow line sign saying that between 7 30 and 6 p.m monday to friday you can't stop there and on Saturdays, between 7.30 and 1 p.m., you can't stop there. And then there is a normal loading. Now, normally, you can load and unload on a single yellow line because the bottom sign here is for single yellow lines. But then it tells you that there's no loading between Monday to Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. So I'm not sure when you're going to unload the stationery at the school because you're going to have to come up out of hours completely. Anyway, so these are the signs which tell you. The top sign is for the zigzags. Is the zigzags outside the school. The yellow sign is for the yellow line lines outside the school. And the white is the for the for loading and unloading on the restricted area. But you are not allowed to stop on the zigzag area between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. So this, this sign, this signage that I'm showing here, there's the sign on the left-hand side, the arrow is pointing to it, and here are the yellow lines going down to the point over there, and that's the sign we were looking at on the left-hand side over there. So that clearly tells you. So one of the big secrets, guys, one of the really, really big secrets when you're working with these things, is to have a look at the signage that is on the lampposts in the area you are actually in. So the moment you start looking at the signage in the area where you are, you can then normally disseminate what you can and what you can't do. And, and you need to understand this because if the examiner is coming down here and you're driving down this road and he says, pull up on the left where it's convenient, then that zigzag area is not a convenient place to pull up. And it because, because of that. And you would probably have to pull up in front of the white car over here. Just in front of the white car, there's enough space to pull up there. Okay, if you come down this road and the examiner says you pull up on the left and you're uncomfortable, then just drive past. Simple. Because if he says, if he says, okay, pull up here, pull up here, right? What he's telling you is you have to pull up at a specific point. And then he has taken away the safe and convenient from the instruction. So if you're driving on your driving test, and the examiner says, pull up here, pull up here in front of that car over there. Then you can check your mirrors, put your left signal and pull over to the left. And you don't have to worry about whether it's safe, convenient or legal, because he's not going to tell you which, if to pull up somewhere he's going to then consider as illegal. That would be very unfair. But if he says to you, pull up on the left where it's safe and convenient or convenient where it's convenient or where you think it's safe to pull up, those are the two terminologies. You might combine them or single. You have the prerogative where you pull up. Then if you're not comfortable, drive past and find another place to pull up. And, and I've been many a test when a, when a student is not comfortable 
where the examiner simply says, okay, well, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll pull up somewhere else. So you need to know these things about the zigzags. First of all, for when you pass, you need to really understand where you can park and you can't park. So single yellow lines, just find a sign that tells you what the situation is with a single yellow line. Double yellow lines, generally, you can't leave your car there. Not a good idea. Um, let me just see. I want to see. I'm going to try something quickly. I want to show you guys just practically. So I want to show you something. And and uh, and honestly, this is what I do as a driving instructor. So I'm going to just let me just get this showing you so I can show you. So just out of out of fun, out of what we are doing at the moment. So let me just put in here. I'm going to show you what I do when I'm going into London. When I let's say, for instance, I'm going into London for a for a visit, and this is this is actually what I do. I'm going to drive into London, and I'm going to. Who wants to tell me where I, I they want me to go in London? And let's find out if I can park there or not. Nando's Brixton. Okay, yeah, we are. We're going to Nando's Brixton, so we're going to put Nando's. I hope they've got. Good chicken, Nando's Brixton. Okay, so we've put in Nando's Brixton. Let's search it. Okay, there we are. That's Nando's Brixton. Now, guys, I'm going to drive there, okay? So what I do is I, 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 first of all, I zoom in on Nando's Brixton. Can I park here? So let's start here. So let's look at the, let's get the, the map up. Okay, so look at all the parking there is down the side here. Can you see this? I can see here's Nando's Brixton. Now here you can actually see the markings where you can park. Now, what time of the day am I going to go there? So let's say I want to go and stop there. Now here's a bus stop. I can't go and park in the bus stop. That's clearly the bus stop right in front of Nando's Brixton. Okay. So I use the Google map and I, I zoom in on it. And then what I do is I grab this little girl. Now, let's say I want to park down here. I would go and I would drop her on this side road here. Okay, now I can see this side road. And look at this. Here's, yeah, I can have a quick look here. Here's a sign. I can quickly have a look at that sign. So I bring that sign. Let's just move over a little bit. See if we can see. Now, we're not going to get it nicely centered on that sign. But we can look at the sign. And there I can see, okay, I can't park on the street. It says permit holders only Monday to Saturday. Well, but I'm going at nine o'clock, so I'm fine. I can actually nav in on that street and go and park there. So this way I can work out where I can park. I can have a good look at where I can park. I can, there's another sign, this sign here. I can have a look at what that parking, I'm going to have a good look at that parking sign. What does that one say? It says from Monday to Saturday, 8.30 to 9.30. Permit holders only. Or you can pay by phone. Oh, there we are. Okay. So I can, if I find a parking there, I just have to pay by phone if I am going at that time. So I can go and check out what the parking restrictions are in the in the area where I'm going to. So I can actually go and find parking or parking where I can find parking. And then I can zoom in on that when I go down the road. So here we are. Here we can see there's parking here. So let's see if we can find a sign. There's a sign. We can look at that sign. And I might, if I was going to the Zulu Cafe, I can have a look. Oh, that's a loading only. So I wouldn't be able to park there. But can you guys get it? Does that make sense to you? So you can zoom in to the area where you want to be going, you can then have a good look at where your area is. And then you can have a look at what the parking conditions are there. And you can actually drive to that point there. Yeah, here's another park. There's another one of those signs. And I know what the parking restrictions are there when I go to that specific place. So that saves you a lot of driving around and trying to find parking. And it, it, it also makes sure you don't get your car into a position which is, which is going to be where you are going to be fined.
so that that is that is obviously when it comes to the driving test uh, if you have to do I, I often need to because i because i do specialized driving tests people say to me please i need to do a, a driving test in cambridge um i would uh i would go to the um go to the Cambridge Test Centre and then have a good look at what it looks like in the Cambridge Test Test Centre. Okay, so that's 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 one of the things you can do. Now, before I finalise my discussion with you guys tonight, I wanted to I want to ask I want to well I want to tell you something else that you need to think about. First of all, there are two classifications, two basic classifications of parking areas on, how can I say, demarcated parking spots. The one type of parking area is something controlled by a council or by some authority. And that's a parking area where the authority controls the parking space. And, the, and if you get a fine in those areas, they can, under their own laws, follow through and take you to court. Now then there's then there's private parking. And the private parking people are basically belong to the um uh let me just get it now. Um where have I got it? Here we are. They basically belong to the British Parking Association. They are governed and have to belong to the British Parking Association, which sets up rules which they have to work according to. Now what you need to understand, which is really important, when somebody sends you a parking fine, it's similar to sending you an invoice. They are telling you at this time you were using our space and you hadn't paid for the space. And this is an invoice. You are getting an invoice. That's what you're getting. And you must regard it as an invoice. Now, if it's from an authority, your best bet is to negotiate that parking fine as soon as possible. Don't ignore it because it, it'll go up and eventually it becomes worth their time and then they go after you. And the way they go after you is sometimes they will just go and clamp your car on the street. And then it doesn't cost you 40 pounds because if you get the parking fine and you solve it, it might cost you only 40 pounds. But if you leave it, and they they then have the authority to clamp your car and take it away. So they might first clamp it. And if you get to them in time, it'll only cost you 260 pounds or 280 pounds. But if they take it away, it might cost you 360 or 400 pounds to recover your car because they can impound your car because of parking fines. If you are dealing with authority, go and protect yourself very easily there. You can, yes, you can go to court. Yes, you can fight it. There's all sorts of ways. But in the end, the best thing to do is to try to get to an amicable solution with the authorities. And that could be um, uh, any government authority that issues a parking fine, any council or anybody like that that issues a parking fine on you. That is, that is something you need to really take care of. Yeah. When somebody from the British Parking Association issues you a fine, now I remember I told you it was an invoice. It is an invoice. And they can't come because of those. They can't come and clamp your car. If, if it's in the area and you've left it there, then yes, you can have problems because they can actually pick it up and take it away because you're not supposed to be there. You haven't paid to be there. But if it if you if you've driven away and you've got a and they then post your parking fine because you didn't pay and you must look find out who's under whose authority they're doing it, then you normally you can try and settle it out. You should always argue it if you had an argument. If you had it, I had a situation where somebody tried to fine me when when I hadn't even been in the thing and they charged me 160 pounds. I told them I hadn't been there and, I, and then I just said take me to court. And they didn't because it's not worth their while because you can still say, look, I wasn't in there. Where's the photographs? You, you can always ask for the photographs. Ask for the images. Make sure you look at the images as well because 
if for instance and this is typical if you stop on a on a yellow box make sure that they give you a sequence of images that you've stopped not just one image you stopped on a yellow box that doesn't mean a thing they've got to give you like okay at 10 seconds 10 seconds past two you were there and 20 30 seconds later you were still in exactly the same position you hadn't moved but don't go with singular pictures or ask for a video that shows that because they've got all of that those are the sort of things you look at but remember it is it is an invoice and you need to consider what who you're dealing with which authority you're dealing with when it comes to parking fines okay and my best my best uh, advice i can give you is always deal with it immediately the moment you start the discussion, you are obeying the authority and nobody can argue that that's what you've done. Even if they take longer to get back to you, you can say, well, I dealt with it immediately. You guys were just too slack, whatever. But be careful and always make sure that check it out. And then then it always comes to a situation is, is it worth the hassle? And where are you going to go with that thing? And how strong is your evidence? Um, my wife uh, got a parking fine for parking near a station. She got in, she she parked at the station and her phone, it's one of these Ringo things that they needed to, to register on when she parked. <coughs> and she drove into the station, parked, and she parked at like 3.15 in the afternoon. And then she phoned me and said, please just put the Ringo account and put it through the Ringo account. And I immediately put it through the Ringo account and paid for it. And we had a receipt. And she literally walked away from the car to go and get her hair done. And when she walked away, the guy slapped a fine on her car for not thing. And the fine was two minutes or one minute after I had registered the Ringo. So what he didn't realize is that it wasn't she that registered the Ringo parking in that spot. It was me because she'd phoned me and said, please, okay, I'm here, just, just register the Ringo for me. And I just did it on my phone at home, which was no problem because it's just, I know the location, the location number. And we just told them, look, let's go to court. We, we want to go to court on this because this is nonsense because the time on their parking fine was two minutes after we'd actually got the receipt from Ringo. So guys, don't just be careful that you look that when you when you first of all, it's really simple to use these new technologies and use them effectively, but keep your records accurately. When you go into a parking area, keep accurate records as well. Okay. All right, that's that's the last thing I want to actually now I'll take questions and answers. Um, there's only one question um, that he asked, will getting parking tickets mess up with my insurance prices? No. Or will that have any effect? No, it has no effect on you. You don't get points for parking tickets. Uh, it just messes up your, your budget. That's all it really does. And 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 uh, if you don't pay them or don't deal with them, then obviously in the end, you, you can get you can get it to some financial trouble as a result of that but no it doesn't it doesn't it's not points on your license and it's not it's not well it's not normally points on your license i mean if you if you if if a police if you stop on a zigzag line in in heavy traffic and you leave your car there then a policeman can have you for dangerous driving and it's not just a parking fine so that in a situation like that you can create a lot of havoc for yourself but normally, no, it's it's just a parking fine. It's all it is. It's an invoice for parking. Okay. Okay, guys. <laughs> I am going to wrap that up. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending this evening. Good night, everybody.